This ambivalence towards slavery became even more difficult to navigate after Jefferson went to Paris in 1784 on behalf of the new U.S. government. When Jefferson went to Paris, he took a man named James Hemings, um, who was a teenager, 18, 19 years old at the time, and he took James with him to have James trained as a chef, a French chef person. Jefferson's wife had died by the time he got to France. Uh, at one point, a young slave was brought over from the United States. She's actually the sister of Robert Hemings, who was by his side as he drafted the Declaration of Independence. Uh, who was she, and what did she become to Jefferson? Well, Sally Hemings, Sarah, uh, nicknamed Sally, was sister to Robert and James. She had been something of a companion to Jefferson's daughter, so she went along, and she was 14. And Sally Hemings crossed the ocean, and while she is there, we don't know when, she became Jefferson's, and their son says concubine is the term that he uses, and she became pregnant by Jefferson, and she wanted to stay in France. And by the time Jefferson thinks that he wants to come home, she wanted to stay. And actually, all of the young people in the Hotel de Langeac wanted to stay in France. Nobody wanted to go home. And she came back to Virginia with Jefferson. Jefferson treated Sally Hemings and her sisters very differently than he did the other slaves on the mountain. She could not refuse consent to sex any more than an enslaved woman could. She had seen him as a person running through the plantation, you know, raping slave women, which which what people did. You write that Jefferson felt a sense of obligation to his slaves. How did that shape the way he felt about them? Well, so once they're back in Mon she was still a child. Yes, well, she was, by our light, she was a child. Uh, she was 16. The age of consent in Virginia at the time was 10. And her, her history with Jefferson, not just the two of them, but his relations with her mother. And in those days, it was much more than father knows best. What he said would go because he was the head of the household. Uh, but at the same time, he also had uh, a white family that was also a part of his life. That is something that makes, it made him comfortable, more comfortable in the world than it would have been if he'd been out there, you know, with the whip himself. I mean, Jefferson has ideals that we still adhere to, that still have meaning for us. I don't know what the Confederacy, but overall, the sense is of being impressed with somebody who decided that he wanted to operate on the world stage and actually managed to do that. It's really hard to do. As I get to be older, I realize it's hard to do anything, you know, to do anything or see things through to the end. And he did so much. Annette Gordon Reed is a historian and law professor at Harvard University. We've been talking today about her book, co-authored with Peter Ona, Most Blessed of the Patriarchs, Thomas Jefferson and the Empire of the Imagination. Annette, thank you for joining us today on Hidden Brain. Oh, thank you for asking me.